Okay, assalamu alaikum. So now we will continue solving some questions about the energy analysis chapter. So here we have water is pumped from a lower reservoir to a higher reservoir by a pump that provides 23 kilowatt of useful mechanical power to the water. The free surface of the upper reservoir is 57 meter higher than the surface of the lower reservoir. If the flow rate of the water is measured to be 0.03, determine the irreversible head loss of the system. Irreversible head loss and the lost mechanical power. And W dot, which is what that corresponds to this head, uh, irreversible head loss. Okay, we need to find those two value, variables. So here, uh, first, let's write the energy equation. Let's write, apply it between this point and this point. And remember, always take point one, like take number of the points in the direction of the flow. So the flow is going from here to here. So take this point, point one, because the flow is starting from here and ending here. Take this point two. If you reverse the directions, then you will get wrong answers. Okay, so P1 by rho G1, G, sorry, G, okay, plus um, here he didn't say anything about the correction factor alpha, so just consider it one. Okay, so plus P1 squared by 2G plus Z1. Okay, plus the head of the pump is equal to P2 by rho G plus V2 squared by 2G, okay, plus Z2 plus the irreversible head loss, okay. Now here you need to be careful. Here he said the the, uh, that the the pump provides 23 kilowatt of useful mechanical power because the pump this is the pump okay this is the inlet of the pump and this is the outlet after yeah, after the pump rises the mechanical energy and here this the input shaft work okay now uh, of course in the case of the pump you you have some efficiency right so this uh, shaft work will not be totally exploited يعني يستغل بالكامل to raise the will not be totally exploited to raise the mechanical energy of the fluid some of it there are some irreversible losses in the pump okay so this term here the head loss it, it's actually two terms the head loss in the pump okay plus the head loss in the pipe and also the head loss plus the head loss in the turbine but here we don't have turbine here we have pump and pipes okay this pipe so when he says this is the uh, the useful that means he already subtracted the inputted shaft work he subtracted from it the head loss of the of the pump so here this is the pump he subtracted this let's say this is the total dot and this is the lost so here he gave you this total minus lost l okay and this is the same in, uh, in and out of the pump this this is called the useful like the exploited shaft work the portion of the shaft work which will raise the mechanical energy of the fluid this is the head of the pump. This is what he, what we are given in the question. Okay. Okay. So we he can either give you the total head of the pump, which is the actual shaft work, which is like the total shaft work, the total shaft work, and then give you the head loss in the pump. Okay. Or he can give you the he already subtracted like he already he already brought this term here you, you see this term the head loss of the pump he brought it to the 
other direction to here. So here you have the head of the pump minus the head loss of the pump, which is proportional to this uh, uh, 23 kilowatt. This is the power. This is the the head. The, the head. Okay, but this is what he is talking about. He already subtracted the head loss of the pump. So in this case, we are lifted with the head loss now will be only the head loss in the pipe. Okay. If you want to calculate, if he said calculate the total head loss due to the pump and due to the pipes, he need to give you not the useful work. He need to give you the total shaft work that is inputted to the pump. Okay. And in that case, you will substitute. And then when you find HL, this is the head loss in the pipe plus the head loss in the pump. Okay. But now in this case, because he gave me only the useful, now what I, what I will find is the only the head loss in the pipe. Okay. So. Head loss here, I'll write just pipe. Okay, pipe. Now, um, so here we also need to find the the diameters. The diameter here is the same as the diameter here. So the velocities will just cancel. Okay. And also here the pressure is atmospheric and here the pressure is atmospheric. So we can also just delete them. And then Z1 here is zero. Okay, Z1 is zero. So we are lifted with head of the pump is equal to Z2 plus the head loss. Okay, and then um we have z2 we have z2 okay and we don't we we need to find hl we can we have we have here the head of the pump but here we don't have he he didn't give me directly the head of the pump he gave it he gave it to me in terms of a power so to find the head of the pump you know remember as i explained in the first video uh, how what's the relation between the power and the head? The power W dot is equal to M dot multiplied by G multiplied by the head always. OK. So. Here. Just substitute this equation here. OK. Uh, or uh, let, let's uh, let, let, let us find the head of the pump. Okay, so we have here 23 kilowatt, which is 23,000 watt. Okay, this is the useful work or the useful power is equal to m dot. How to find m dot? Rho, the density, which is 1000, multiplied by the volumetric flow rate, which is 0 0.03 here. 0 0.03. Okay, this is m dot. And then multiplied by 9.81, multiplied by the head of the pump. This is the head of the pump, which head of the pump is equal to uh, 23,000 is equal to. The head of the pump is 78.15 meters. Now go back and substitute the head of the pump in this equation and find the head loss in the pipe. Here we have the head of the pump 78.15 is equal Z2. Z2 is uh, 57. 57 plus the head loss, irreversible head loss in the pipe, which is equal to uh, 21.15 okay, meters. Uh, 
uh, yes, 78, 57, 21.15, okay, correct. Now, uh, what, what he also wanted, we found here the head loss. Now he won the power, also apply again the same equation. Apply this equation again, but but for the to find the 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 losses, the the power lost, okay. Due to the irreversibilities uh, is equal to m dot g head loss, which is equal to a thousand by the volumetric flow rate by g, okay, by this number that we just found, 21.15, okay? So just substitute and find the answer. Okay, now moving on to uh, another question. Let me just bring it from the book. Okay, this question here says an underground water is to be pumped by a 78% efficient 5 kilowatt submerged pump. This is the 5 kilowatt, this is the, the shaft work which is used to operate the pump, the entered shaft work, okay? Then of course this one will be, uh, some of it will be used to, come to raise the mechanical energy of the fluid and some of it will be lost. And this is why we have an efficiency here, okay? So... Uh, to be a uh, five submerged pump to a pool whose free surface is 30 meter above the underground water level. The diameter of the pipe is seven centimeter on the intake side. Here is seven, seven intake side, and here the uh, on the discharge side, five. The discharge side. Determine the maximum flow rate of water and the pressure difference across the pump. Flow rate m dot or the maximum flow rate m dot and the the pressure difference delta p of the pump. Okay. Now, uh, so I'll directly always apply the energy equation and apply it in the direction of the flow. How the flow is going? The flow is going like this way to here. So take this, the free surface here as 0.1, and take this, the surface, uh, this free surface here as 0.2, okay? Because the, why we are taking those two points? Because everything here is known. Here the velocity is zero, the pressure is atmospheric, and the elevation is known, okay? So that always apply first where, where you have full information, okay? So P1 here, and the kinetic energy factor is negligible. No need to include alpha. By rho g plus v v1 squared by 2g plus um, z1 plus head of the pump equal p2 by rho g plus v2 squared by 2g squared plus z2 plus the head losses okay now here he uh, uh, the maximum the maximum flow rate of water so how can we find the maximum flow rate of water we need to find the head of the pump okay the head of the pump and he gave me the work of the pump and, and then you will apply the same equation that we just applied the w dot the work uh, the power of the pump multiply uh, is equal to m dot g head of the pump okay so we need to find the head of the pump 
Sorry for that noise. Okay, we need to, uh, to, I hope that you can hear me clearly. This is the head of the pump, okay? We need to find it from this equation. Now here, the head of the pump, yeah, what, uh, here he gave you the, the power input, okay? The total power input, and then he gave you the efficiency. So if you multiply this five kilowatt by the efficiency, you will get the useful the the useful work or the portion of the shaft work that will be used to raise the mechanical energy of the fluid. Okay, and if you if you if you don't want to substitute here the useful the useful, okay, this is the useful the useful again. I will explain it. This is the pump. This is the work. This is okay. This is the, there is here a shaft work. Portion of it will be used to raise the mechanical energy, and portion of it is just lost. So if you want to substitute here the head of the pump here, the head of the pump, which is the uh, the 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 shaft work here, the shaft work here, you need to consider the head losses here in the pump. Okay, here we have head loss in the pump and head loss in the pipe. The pipe, he didn't mention anything about the losses in the pipe, although there are there will be okay, but he didn't mention, so just neglect it. So here we have the head loss of the pump. If you need here to substitute the head of the pump, the 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 like the shaft here, the sh the shaft head here, then you need to consider this head loss in the other side. But if you will substitute the useful head of the pump, which is the portion, the portion of the portion of the shaft, portion of the shaft work, which will be used to raise the the uh, mechanical energy, then the, no need to substitute to consider the he the head loss in the pump in this side. Okay, no need to consider this one. So it's up to you. Okay. And uh, what else? Yes, because if you if you are substituting the useful, the useful, then that means you already brought this term, the head loss in the pump. You brought it to the other side, and you subtract you subtract it from this one from the total shaft work. You already did that, so no need to again consider the head loss in the pump. But if you will substitute the total, this one, then you need to add this term here okay i hope it's clear for you now what i will do what i will do i will consider the useful i will consider the useful meaning that i already brought this term here and subtract it from the total okay so i'll just delete this one okay and the useful is the is the like the five kilowatt multiplied by the efficiency Okay, or proportional to this, to five kilowatt multiplied by the efficiency multiplied. The, okay, the, 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 yeah. I mean they are related here. This one and this one. Okay, so substituting back uh, here, P uh, P one and P two. They are both the atmospheric. And V1 and V2, the fluid here is not moving, and the fluid here also is not moving. So delete them. So you have Z1 from the energy equation plus the useful head of the pump is equal to Z2. Z1 is zero, so, uh, so I no need to write it here. Z1 is zero. Assume that our reference is here. Okay, so Z1 is zero, Z2 is 30. So you are lifted with lifted up with this simple equation. Head of the pump is just Z2, which is 30 meter. Now applying this equation, W dot useful useful equal M dot G head of the pump useful. Head of the pump useful, meaning the head of the pump in the shaft, the total inputted shaft work, minus the head loss in the pump. Okay. This is the head pump useful. 
now substitute this the useful the useful is the, the five kilowatt or the five thousand okay multiplied by the efficiency the efficiency he said that there is equal to uh, 78 percent okay so see 0 0.78 and this one is equal to m dot by 9.81 by 30. So m dot is just equal to 0 0.78 by 9.81 times 30. 13.25 um, kilogram per second okay here i'm not sure he he mean by the flow rate he wants the the mass flow rate or the volumetric flow rate but anyhow you can find both okay they are both related because uh, m dot is equal to rho q so if you want to find q just divide m dot m dot by the, the density of the water, okay, which is uh, zero point zero one three two five, correct? One two three, yes, okay. Now, what else is required? The assume the level of the pump. What's next? Ah, the pressure difference across the pump. Okay, now again, we will apply the energy equation. But now, between the inlet of the pump and the outlet of the pump. Okay. Uh, here I made a mistake. Here, um, I think here, Or, uh, no, 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 everything is fine, correct. Nothing is wrong. Till here we're applying everything correct. Okay, here I thought that I I shouldn't have delete those because the diameter here is not as the diameter here. But I'm, uh, but I here I applied it between a point here and a point here, okay? So it doesn't have something to do with the diameters. Okay, the velocity here is zero and the velocity here is zero. Now, Applying the energy equation again between point one here and point two here. Always take point one, the beginning of the flow, and point two, the end of the flow. The water is going this way. So this is point one and this is point two. Uh, this is to find the pressure difference across the pump. So P1 divided by rho G plus the correction factor is zero. So V1 squared by 2G plus always the the difference in elevation between the suction line and the discharge line is negligible so i will not write z1 and z2 okay they are approximately equal to each other and here we have the again the useful head of the pump okay is equal to p2 by by rho g plus v2 squared by 2g and then we have nothing we have no head losses in the pipe nothing mentioned in the question and the head loss in the pump is already included in this term okay now 
before uh, substituting, we need to find the velocities at the section and the velocity at the discharge. How to find the velocities? We just divide, so V1 is equal to the volumetric flow rate by area 1, and V2, the volumetric flow rate by area 2. So here you have 0, 0.0. We found the flow rate here, the volumetric 1, 3, 2, 5, pi, pi. Um, zero point, what's the diameter of the suction line? Uh, this the diameter of five is seven meter on the intake, okay? On the intake is seven. So here is zero point zero seven squared by four. And here is five, zero point zero. On three two five by by zero point zero five squared by four. This one and this one. Uh, so three point four four three. This one is. 3.443 and the other one is uh, okay meter per second and meter per second now We want the pressure difference, and remember the pump is raising the mechanical energy, so P2 is greater than P1, which means that delta P is P2 minus P1. This is just, I'm, I'm doing this to obtain a, a positive number, okay? Because if you find P1 minus P2, you, it, you will have a negative number. So just here to find the positive number, I should, I should bring P1 to the other side, to have P2 minus P1. Okay, so uh, here this is P2 minus P1, and they have common uh, denominator, so just do this way, minus rho g, uh, sorry, uh, divided by rho g, and then what else? Uh, here we have V1. Uh, you can bring V2 to the other side. So we have V1 squared minus V2 squared. And they have also common denominator. So just combine both them, 2G. And we have here the head of the pump. So. The pressure difference P2 minus P1 is equal to head of the pump plus V1 squared minus V2 squared divided by 2G multiplied by multiplied by Rho G. Okay, the denominator here multiplied by the other side. Okay, the head of the pump, we found it. We found it here in the first step. The head of the pump is uh, 30. Okay, and the velocities, we just found them this one and this one, V1 and V2, and 2G, just 2 and 9.81. Density of water is 1000, and here this is 9.81. Okay. Okay. Now moving on to the last question. Uh, let me bring it from the book.
Okay, this is the continuation of the question, okay? So we'll read here, then we'll read here. Okay, an oil pump is drawing 25 kilowatt of electric power while pumping oil with density of 860. This is 25 kilowatt because remember how this system works. This motor receives an input electric power, which is this one, 25, okay? This is electric power converted Total if it's sufficient, say 100, and partial if it's not 100, convert this 25 into power, uh, shaft work. This shaft work will be used by the pump to pump the the uh, water or to increase the mechanical uh, the mechanical energy. Okay, so this is the electric power E, uh, the input of the motor, the electric power. At a rate of 0 0.1, this is the, the volumetric flow rate. The inlet and the outlet diameters of the pipe are 8 cm and 12 cm respectively. If the, pressure, if the pressure rise of the oil in the pump is measured to be 8, uh, 250 kilopascal. Now here he gave me the pressure drop. Remember in, the, in that question, uh, the question that we saw previously, This one in the first tutorial, in the in the second the first part of the second tutorial. Here he gave you in terms of meter of Hg, and then we used the manometer because he, he said he measured it by a man, mercury of manometer. So you need to attach a manometer here and see this height difference, the height difference between the 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 one side and the other, and then uh, uh, develop a relation between the pressure drop. Okay, but here it's ready for me like I did here, okay? Here it's ready for me, he gave me directly the pressure drop, okay? Okay. Uh, and the motor efficiency is 90, meaning that this 25 kilowatt, uh, part, 10% uh, uh, of it will be lost, okay? And the remaining 90% is, will be converted into a shaft work here that will be used by the pump. Determine the mechanical efficiency of the pump. Take the kinetic energy correction factor here. Uh, the focus on this one, okay? Don't just always rush and consider it one, okay? So the mechanical efficiency of the pump, okay? The efficiency, okay? Eta is equal. The change, the change in the mechanical energy of the fluid divided by the shaft work w dot shaft input okay if they are equal then that's mean its efficiency is 100 if not then its efficiency is not 100 and here also we we should assume that there is no losses in the pipe because if there is losses in the pipe then the 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 what the if there is losses in the pipe, then th this change in the mechanical energy, like there, it's affected by the losses in the pump and the losses in the pipe. So th then you cannot come and, and substitute this delta E, which resulted from the losses in the pipe and the losses in the pump and divided by the shaft. This will not give you the efficiency of the pump. We, if you want the efficiency of the pump itself, you need to, to neglect whatever else. You need to see what's the effect of the pump only. So assume that there is the pipe is perfect, no losses on it. Now see how the pump will perform, how it will rise the energy, and then divide it by the inputs. Okay. So here we'll assume the no losses in the pipe. Okay. To be fair and only find the efficiency of the pump alone. Nothing else is lost. Oh, yeah. All all the losses are are due to the pump only. Okay. So. Delta E, how we can find delta E? First, find the uh, delta E. Is, uh, the, those are the three terms, right? P, the, uh, the terms of the mechanical energy. You have P, or the head, okay? P by rho G plus alpha V, V squared by 2G plus Z, correct? Z here, we always said the inlet and the outlet are at a negligible elevation difference. So just delete Z. So we have only those two terms. So the, the change, the change 
and also here uh, this is point one okay this is point one and this is point two in the direction of the flow the flow is going this way so the beginning is point one and the end is point two so the the difference since uh, point two will have higher mechanical energy because it's a pump it's adding energy to the fluid so i will subtract like say delta head okay delta of the heads is equal p2 minus p1 this is just to obtain a, a, a positive number rho g plus alpha v v2 V S V two squared minus V one squared divided by two G. Okay, just write the energy equation. Okay, this is the energy equation, and then like uh, play with the terms. Okay. Or uh, sorry, this is uh, this is not the energy equation. This is the change in the mechanical energy only. So the, don't write the sorry. Don't write the energy equation. You need to write just the change in the mechanical energy or the change in the head loss. You need only to consider the first three terms in the mechanical energy between the first state and the last state. OK, and then find the difference. So this one, uh, P2 minus P1 is given 250 kilopascal. Now V2 and V1, we need to find it. Because he gave me the flow rate. He gave me the flow rate to be 0 0.1. So again, V1 is equal to the is equal to the flow rate by uh, by A1, which is equal to 0 0.1 by 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 the diameter squared. I will come back and see what's the diameter. Okay. First, let me do this and B2 is equal to Q by A2, and it is 0 0.1. Let me separate them so I don't mix between both. Divided by, by the diameter squared by 4, and it is equal to. So V1, V1 is the set of the intake. V1. The inlet is 8 and the outlet is 12. So here, inlet is 8 centimeter, which is 0 0.08. The exit is 12, 0 0.12. Okay, this one, 0 0.1. This one is 19. 0.89 meter per second and this one zero twelve yeah here eight point eight four meter per second okay now go back and substitute Delta head P2 minus P1, he said 250 kilo pascal. So this is by thousand to convert it into pascal. Rho of the of the oil is given in the question 860 by 9.81. And then plus alpha. Alpha here is he said it's 1.05. And then V2, V2, V2 is the, uh, yes, V2 is this one. So it's 8.84 squared minus 19.89 squared, okay, divided by Two by nine point eight one. So the answer of this one 
uh, is equal to two five. Just give me a second. Okay, this one is 12.64. Okay, now we want the efficiency. The efficiency is not the, it's the change in the, in the mechanical energy divided by the shaft. Now we have the change in the head. Uh, sorry, not the change in the, here, it's yes, the change in the mechanical energy by the shaft work, not the power, or also you can say it's, the change in the mechanical energy, not the sorry, the mechanical power that the E dot by W dots. Okay, if you are using here power, use here power. If you are using here energy, use here uh, energy. Okay, here is there is no dot. Or you also you can divide the heads. You can divide delta head of the the change in the delta head divided by the head of the shaft. Okay, so you can use whatever you like. I will use this one, okay? So, the efficiency is equal delta E dot by W dot. Delta E dot, remember always, how to convert from a head to a, to a power, multiply M dot by G by the head. Here, because we have difference, so multiply it by the difference. And W dot of the shaft is equal to W, w dot electricity multiplied by the efficiency. Because here 25 is, is the input of the motor, then part of it is dissipated, part of it is converted into shaft. The shaft work is the 90% of this 25 electricity. Okay. 25 kilowatt. 25, this is in watt, so to find the, in, uh, this is in kilowatt, 25, so multiplied by 1000 to be in watt, and then by, the this is the electricity, to find the shaft multiplied by the efficiency. Okay, and in the top, we have M dot, which is rho, multiplied by the volumetric flow rate, which is 0 0.1. And then by G, 9.81. By the head difference, we found it to be what? 12.6, 12 12.64 meter. So 12.64 meter, okay divided by 25 multiplied by 1000, which is 25,000 by 0 0.9, okay, which is 0 0.47. Or multiply by 100, the answer multiplied by 100 to find it as a percentage, which is 47. Percent. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you for your time and good luck in your quiz.